I will be providing you with 10 ways in which you can overcome failure and achieve career success. I will be focusing more on uh, exam failure because as medics we have to sit countless exams and I'm sure uh, many of you have uh, failed at something along the way. I know I have. So I'll be providing you with 10 ways in which you can deal with failure, but more specifically exam failure. everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, then a massive welcome to you. My name is Dr. Baptiste. I am a portfolio GP, or as I like to say, a GP with a portfolio career. If you haven't subscribed, then why not consider subscribing? I have loads of useful videos to support you on your medical career journey. As always, if you like the video, then make sure you give it a thumbs up. So I'm gonna start the video by talking you through my own experience of failure. I will talk about my exam failure. So let me set the scene for you. Um, I've always been a very high achiever. Uh, when I was at school, I always did very well. Um, casting my mind back, there was one exam that I, I would say failed because it was a failure for me. It was a chemistry uh, exam, one of the uh, modules in um, to get a chemistry AS level. And I achieved a grade C. Um, and for me, that was a massive failure because of course, to get into medical school, you need to be achieving A's and if not an A, then at least a B. So a C really wasn't going to do. So from that point on, I said to myself, well, I can't let that happen again. And I worked really, really hard. I looked at why I had failed and I said, well, I'm going to make sure that I implement strategies so that this does not happen again. And for many years, I didn't fail at anything in terms of my schooling and even at medical school. I had never failed one of the um, important exams. Of course, I may not have done very well in some of the mini exams or assessments, but for the most part, for every exam that counted, I passed and I passed really well in many of my exams. So when I started training, there weren't really any exams. There was an advanced life support uh, a course and an exam at the end of that, which again, I'd scored really highly in that exam and that was fine. And then for many years, I hadn't really taken any exams. So I Looking back, I felt really rusty, actually, when I had to come and sit an, an, an exam for my GP training. So the first exam I, I had taken was in many years, and that was a written assessment that was called the AKT or Applied Knowledge Test. If you want me to talk about GP exams in more detail, I'm happy to do that. So let me know in the comments below. But yeah, so I passed the AKT, the written exam, and again, that was fine. Um, of course, I was nervous, but I managed to perform like I normally do. And I think for me, looking at my exam failure, which I'm going to talk now about, I may not have felt confident with my exam performance, but I always passed. And I wonder if maybe I had, became a, I had become a little bit more complacent when I came to my final exam, just maybe expecting that, okay, I hadn't done really well, but or I felt I hadn't done really well, and then ex just expecting to pass like I always did. Um, so when I had to come and sit my final practical exam, my f last ever exam, um, <laughs> I, I failed and I failed by two marks and it was a massive shock in the beginning but then when I really looked at why I failed I realized that actually it wasn't a shock and it wasn't a surprise at all um it, it during the exam I I had I knew that I wasn't doing very well uh and it didn't <laughs> it just manifested in this failure and I failed by two marks so if you look at it I didn't fail massively but if you really go deeper actually I shouldn't have failed by two marks I should have been well over the pass mark so for me, that was uh, uh, the only real big failure I had in many, many years since that chemistry exam. And I had to really work hard to get myself in the mindset to get back up and to then take the exam again. So by using my experience, I'm going to provide you with 10 things um, for you to be able to get over any type of failure, but more specifically exam failure. So when I reflected on my exam failure, I realized that well, there were many things and many reasons as to why I failed. And I'm now going to share some of those reasons uh, with you so that you don't make the mistakes I did. So tip number one is to have a moment. If you need to cry, it's okay. I think you just need to accept that you have failed and let it sink in. 
for me, I even thought about appealing uh, the exam decision. And that was right at the beginning when I found out I failed. And when I let it sink in, I realized that actually appealing the decision was not the right thing to do. So let it sink in, accept the fact, and ultimately just try and move on. Now, tip number two is get back up. Yes, take a moment, let it sink in. But after that, you have to really get up and get back at it and start again. Now, when it was me, I took a few days to uh, cry. <laughs> I took a few days to really just recover. Um, and then I said, you know what? I have to get up. I have to do this exam again. And fortunately, the, the booking periods were very close together. So they were, I only had to wait maybe a couple of weeks or so before I could book the exam again. And I went right back to it. So this leads into my next point, which is tip number three, and this is have a break. Like I said, I took a couple of days where I had a bit of a meltdown, <laughs> if I'm really honest. <laughs> but then shortly after that, I took my mind off the exam. I didn't revise, not for long, but <laughs> I didn't revise. Uh, I just took some time for self-care, and that's what I would advise you to do. Take a moment to look after yourself. You would have been revising uh, for many months, probably, and so I think you need to just take a moment to look after yourself. My next tip is to get support. You may not be someone who speaks to people, but I would urge you to try and speak about your how you're feeling, even if it is a few words. Sometimes getting your emotions out there really does help the healing process and it really helps you to move on. So I would encourage you to speak to someone. And like I said, if you're not someone who speaks to people about how you're feeling, try and get some support in some shape or form. It's really not a good idea to deal with things on your own. Especially, like I said, if this is the first time you failed an exam or you failed something, and you're not sure how to deal with it, even just bouncing ideas off of someone else will really help you in making sure you pass the next time. Tip five is I want you to know that failing is normal. I really wish someone had told me this. <laughs> uh, maybe I wouldn't have listened, I don't know, but you need to fail. Failing is something that does help you. You may not agree when you're in that moment. Sometimes it forces you to actually stop like it did for me. It forced me to stop and reevaluate where I was, what I was doing, what, what was I doing wrong? And so sometimes I think it's important for us to fail. Um, of course, it's like I said, it's not a very good feeling, but in order to mature, in order to develop yourself and to become stronger, you need to fail. And so when I look back, although I'm, I didn't want to fail and it really set me back, I felt in my journey at the time, when I look back, actually, it, it made me stronger, it made me better. And I think it helped me become a better GP. So for me, I, I feel like I had to fail um, in order for me to have the su success that I have now. I think if I didn't fail, then maybe there would have been things that I was doing wrong, but just weren't highlighted. And so because I failed, I found out there were some crucial things that I needed to work on in order to become a better person and a better GP. So again, this leads into my next point, tip number six, you have to find out why you failed. Now, for me, there were loads of reasons. <laughs> we can break it down if you like. So for me, I feel number one, I rushed um, when I was gonna sit my exam. So when you are in medical school, of course, you are told when you're gonna have an exam and you have to prepare for that deadline. When you're a doctor, you can book your exam when it may be the best time for you. And for me, I feel like I booked the exam way too early. I feel like I rushed it. I rushed it because number one, it was my final exam. Uh, number two, my birthday was coming up and I wanted to enjoy my birthday and I wanted to get the exam out of the way. And number three, I just wanted to focus on more of the career sides, more of becoming a GP, more on my audit and all the other workplace based assessments I had to do. And I felt the exam was just in the way, <laughs> to put it bluntly. So I think personally, I rushed it. Um, I think number two, it was again just maybe not preparing as much as I should have. I feel like I should have been observed and been critiqued more harshly by people I was not comfortable with, whether that was um, maybe some of the people in my cohorts as a GP trainee, whether that was uh, at my GP surgery with some of the other doctors that I wasn't familiar with. I think it's good to have a really good relationship, professional relationship with your trainer. And I think I had a very good one. And I think that worked against me because I felt like I was too relaxed with my trainer. And I feel like when you're going to be in exam setting, 
where you're not going to be comfortable. Like I said in my previous videos, you need to put yourself in an uncomfortable position. And I think I just wasn't in uh, many uncomfortable situations. So when I got into the exam room, I was met with people who I didn't know and I wasn't familiar with, and they were sitting meant to be out of my eye line, but I could see them, and that was very off putting. That also goes back into confidence, actually. And I feel like if I had been more uncomfortable and I received very good feedback, it would have boosted my confidence. So there were a lot of different factors as to why I failed, and your job is to determine why you failed, how you can fix it. Again, it goes back to maybe even study methods. I feel like maybe my study methods could have been optimized better. So it really goes back to what what you did wrong and how you can improve. And until you work out exactly why you failed, then you may fail again. So take some time, write things down, really critique yourself and get feedback from other people. But with the CSA exam, they do give you some feedback. It was more of a generic feedback, but it did still give me an insight into what I did wrong. So if you do receive any feedback, utilize it, you know, really pick it apart and be harsh on yourself um, so that you can do better and you pass the next time. Tip number seven, believe in yourself, have a positive mindset. You can do this. I remember when I was revising in some of my sessions, actually a lot of my sessions, I kept saying, oh, you know, I'm so rubbish. Oh, why can't I get this? What I really needed to be saying to myself was, you can do this, you just need to improve. Um, and just positive, positive words and thoughts. So you do not want to fail before you've even begun have a positive mindset. If you want to know more about how you can be positive and how being positive can literally change your life, then check out one of my earlier videos. Now, tip number eight may not apply to you if you're a medical student, probably more if you're a doctor, and that is taking the exam as soon as possible. You have a lot of information to remember. You've revised for many months, and so you want to hold on to that information, and it may be difficult to do if you postpone that exam for longer. Of course, if you're a medical student, I'm not sure how it would work depending on your university. Uh, your university may hold the resits quite soon after, which would be very good. But if you're a doctor and you can book that exam within the next month or so, I would urge you to do that. That really benefited me. And it really put me under pressure to focus and hone in on the areas that I was weak on. So for me, that worked for me, but it may not work for you. But I do think if you take that exam as soon as possible, it does help, like I said, with all retaining the, all the information, but also it means that, you know, things aren't being dragged out and you can then enjoy your time after your exam versus having to wait many, many months and then feeling maybe a bit worse about yourself. So tip nine is remember the end goal. When you have failed, of course, it's a horrible feeling. Like I said, I know, but the only way or one of the only ways I was able to get through and get up and do the exam again and quite quickly afterwards was because I remembered the end goal. I wanted to be a GP. I wanted to complete my training. I had worked for three years in preparation for this exam on the GP training program. I was not going to give up now. <laughs> Remembering why you're doing the exam will definitely help you get up, do the exam again and ultimately to pass. My final tip is to share your story with someone else. It may not comfort you when you have failed, but for me, I'm able to share my story with all of you now. So at least someone could be watching this video and may think, well, actually Dr. Baptiste failed since she failed a very, very big exam. Um, so I hope that brings someone out there comfort to know that I failed and if I can get back up again, then I know you can. So those are my 10 tips to beat exam failure and to achieve career success. I really hope you found that video useful. I hope you can take some comfort in knowing that I failed too. <laughs> um, and as always, if you like the video, then show me some support, give it a thumbs up and let me know if you have um, failed an exam, let me know where you are in your medical career journey. I'm always willing to help you guys where I can. I will see you in my next video.